Good morning, Rhonda. I'm Dia Pavel, and I am a member of the Board of Trustees of the Unitarian Universalist Society of Amherst, and I use she, her pronouns. Welcome to you, old friends and new, young and old, on Zoom and in the sanctuary. You are an essential part of our celebration today. Whether you're, today is your first day or your thousandth Sunday in our midst, we are stronger because you are with us. We are one people of many beliefs, many origins, sexualities, and genders. We are all growing, all learning, all loved. Just as you are, you are welcome here. As part of our effort to seek feedback on the governance of our congregation, you are invited to join us during the first 15 minutes of any regular meeting of the board, chatting with us during the social hour, or by using the email address board at uusocietyamherst.org. We are grateful to be in community with you. Happy spring. Such as it is. Um, I'm the Reverend Rachel Hayes, minister of the Unitarian Universalist Society of Amherst. I use she, her pronouns. Allison Bull was going to be our worship associate today, if you've been following along at home, but her family has a bug that she did not want to share with everybody in the sanctuary. So thank you, Allison, for your generosity of not being here today. Today, we are welcoming spring and reflecting on love as the center of our faith. While local COVID numbers are lower, masks are optional in the sanctuary. Please reserve the balcony section near the windows for those who choose to wear masks. I call us to worship this morning with these words from the Reverend Joan Javier Duval. She's the minister of the Unitarian Church of Montpelier. And you have a part in today's call to worship. Repeat after me. You are beloved and you are welcome here. Whether tears have fallen from your eyes this past week, or gleeful laughter has spilled out of your smiling mouth, you are beloved and you are welcome here. Whether you are feeling brave or brokenhearted, defiant or defeated, fearsome or fearful, you are beloved and you are welcome here. Whether you have untold stories buried deep inside, or stories that have been forced beyond the edges of comfort, you are beloved and you are welcome here. Whether you have made promises, broken promises, or are renewing your promises, you are beloved and you are welcome here. Whatever is on your heart, however it is with your soul in this moment, you are beloved and you are welcome here. In this space of welcome and acceptance, commitment and recommitment, of covenant and connection, let us worship together. We light this flame to invite a world of peace where we heal the wounds, where we share what we have with one another, where justice is another word for relationship, and we listen for what love has to say. I invite you to rise in body, in spirit, in all the ways that we do together to sing hymn number 95, There Is More Love.
Our religious education classes have been hit hard this morning with planned travel and unplanned travel and illness and ice storms. Um, so we are going to have a smaller than usual group today. So I'm actually going to ask if Jess and Lila would pass out those seeds. Now I'm going to tell you a little bit about what we're doing this week and next week, and then I'll get to my time for all ages, which includes all of you. So, today in our religious education classes, including the little ones who are already downstairs, we're going to be planting some seeds and talking about spring. We've been talking about what interdependence means, what it means to all depend on one another. And so today we're going to talk about what it means for us to plant something so small, a seed of something, and then nourish and nurture that as it grows. Next week is Easter. We are going to have an Easter egg hunt. And so it is going to happen downstairs during service time. If anyone really wants to volunteer, let me know. <laughs> also, if you are planning to have grandchildren or nieces and nephews or visiting people who would like to hunt for eggs, there is a link in the announcements this week from Leah to let me know that you're bringing kids so I can have a general idea of how many are coming. All right, so those are my two announcements. So I would like you to take the seed you have in your hand. Just look at it for a minute. There is a book by Susan Marie Swanson. It's a picture book. It's called To Be Like the Sun. And it starts, little seed, little striped gray sunflower seed. Do you really know everything there is to know about being a sunflower? And it goes on to say, the instructions are written on your heart. That little seed that you're holding in your hand, everyone a little bit different. Some of you have sunflower seeds, some of you have four o'clock seeds. They have all of the instructions on how to grow that kind of plant. The book goes on to say, but you're doing your work down in the soil, not radish work, not onion work, but sunflower work. And I love that idea of doing sunflower work, the work that that seed was meant to do. That seed cannot pick a different kind of work to do. That seed, in order to do its work, depends on all of the other things going right. It depends on the water, the sun, the soil, and sometimes it depends on you. If you've planted that in a little pot, then now you two depend on each other. It depends on you without even knowing it. And you are depending on it to do that sunflower work that you have asked it to do by planting it. And so as you go about your day, I would like you to think about what is written on your heart. So we get to make choices. That sunflower seed or that four o'clock seed does not get to make choices. But we get to make choices. But I want you to think, what is written? What instructions are there for you? What is guiding you? And what things do you need from the world around you to make those things happen. Oh,
All year, I have come back during this time together over and over to the shared values of Unitarian Universalism, the values of justice, equity, transformation, pluralism, interdependence, and generosity. This list comes from the proposed revision to Article 2 of the Unitarian Universalist Association's bylaws, the part that says who we are and why we exist. You may have already seen the nifty flower graphic of the values surrounding a chalice with the word love at the center. This is what the proposed revision says about love. As Unitarian Universalists, we covenant congregation to congregation and through our association to support and assist one another in our ministries. We draw from our heritages of freedom, reason, hope, and courage, building on the foundation of love. Love is the power that holds us together and is at the center of our shared values. We are accountable to one another for doing the work of living our shared values through the spiritual discipline of love. Love is the power that holds us together. I know that to be true. I experienced it firsthand in 2020 when unable to share physical space due to those first COVID-19 lockdowns, we came together on Zoom and it was real and it was full of love. We found one another on Zoom and on the phone and outside when it got warm. Love was the power that held us together when we, the congregation, could not be together. And it's true in the national organization of the Unitarian Universalist Association as well. We are not defined by a creed of shared beliefs. The only test for whether a person or congregation is Unitarian Universalist is that they have in the spirit of love committed to our shared path. Our commitment is not to beliefs, it is to our companions. It's true in the UUA, and it's true right here. In this congregation, we are humanist, Buddhist, Jewish, mystic, religious, naturalist, atheist, agnostic, some drawing from earth-based practices, some folks who are figuring out their relationship to Christianity, whether they would call themselves Christian or not, some other inspirations, all of the above, some of the above, none of the above. We do not come here to be insulated from people who have different beliefs or practices or past experiences. We come here because love says that we need one another in the richness of our differences. We know this love when we find it by the outward values of justice, equity, transformation, pluralism, interdependence, and generosity. We are not original in the fact that our congregational covenant begins with the statement Love is the spirit of this community. We adapted our covenant from one in the back of the hymnal by James Vila Blake. We tailored it for this century and our congregation, and the congregation voted on it at our annual meeting last June. Love is the spirit of this community. Love is where we meet one another Love is how we decide to be together. Love is how we commit to making this world a better place for all of us and all the people of the world and all of its organisms and ecosystems. Love is where we find our consolation and our challenge. 
Love is how we learn from our past, connect to this moment, and dare to imagine a future. Our congregation has committed to love, which is not to say that we do it perfectly, but oh my, do we try and try and try. I love the way that we open the doors week after week to feed the town breakfast. And I love the way we housed 14 people at a time as a Craig's Doors shelter site during the height of COVID. I love the way you feed one another at social suppers, with soups and casseroles delivered after surgeries, and the way so many of you have supported Fakiri's Kitchen and their delicious Afghan food. I love the way you listen to one another with genuine curiosity in small group ministry, but also in committees and in the board meeting. I love the way you commit to paying our excellent staff as fairly as possible. I love the way you show up for one another over and over to support one another and the way you show up for our community. Our congregation has committed to love. We have committed to love people through their whole lifespans, birth, child dedications, childhood milestones, coming of age, bridging into young adulthood, adult milestones of every kind, marriage, divorce, relocation, parenting, retirement, disability, reinvention, and yes, death, burial, and memorial. We look at one another and bear witness to the truth that this life matters. And it matters that we are in each other's lives. And sometimes it is messy. And sometimes we screw up. But we have committed to loving one another, being present to one another, telling one another the truth, and having the boundaries that we need to keep these relationships a positive force in our lives. When I arrived among you almost five years ago, I asked you to accept me as I am, which that week meant still riding waves of grief after my grandmother's death to accept me as I was, meaning a fully qualified but still brand new minister, to accept that I would be different from ministers you've had before because I am a different person. And you did. You gave me space to breathe in my grief among all the excitement of that candidating week. You accepted that we would have a lot to learn from one another as we got to know one another, and that I would learn a lot from the job. And you met me with curiosity and kindness and made sure I had what I needed to minister to you well, which is to say, you loved me. And I love you so much. Whether you have been here for decades or you just got here, in the sanctuary, on Zoom, later on YouTube, I love you. In this congregation, we love people well, and never perfectly, but well. Not because we're better than anyone else, but simply because we know that love is what we come for and what we do here. It's what holds us together against all odds. 
It calls us back when we've screwed up and need to try again. It welcomes us home when our hearts are breaking, when the world is too big or too cruel. And even when we can't fix it, we don't turn away from a broken heart. Love is our business and our call and our blessing all day, every day. It is our source and our destiny. It is our raw materials and our process. Love is what we do, how we do it, and our deepest nature. Love is the spirit of this community. May the love of this congregation be a balm to the brokenhearted, a fuel to those who believe in a better future, and the roads that bring us out and back home to one another. Amen. I invite you to rise in body, in spirit, in voice, to sing hymn number 34, Though I May Speak with Bravest Fire. Let us take a moment of silence together, holding all that has been spoken in love. Spirit of love and truth, help us to feel you in our breathing in and breathing out. Quiet our minds, even if only for a moment. Still our bodies, even if only for a moment. Soothe our souls in this holy moment. When uncertainty pervades, give us rest from worry. When fear rises, give us peace. When pain surfaces, give us a balm. Some of our spirits are so weary. Some of our bodies feel tired, fried. Some of our minds feel frantic and uneasy. How long will this last? 
we ask in desperation. Spirit of life-giving love, remind us of the cycles of life so that we might turn toward the dawn, turn toward the thaw, and turn toward the rebirth of spring with new hope. Make that hope alive in us, O Holy One. Ignite that hope so it burns brighter than our fears. And may that bright hope shine for others to witness, that our faith might be a beacon and our love a lamp to light the way. O oh, luminous spirit, fill us with gratitude as we turn toward one another in the human family, never alone on our journeys, always reminded of a greater love that holds all. Blessed be, may it be so. Amen. Please remain seated as we sing our meditation hymn, which is number 1009 in the Teal Hymnal, and on the screen, Meditation on Breathing. extinguish our chalice. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. About to sing our closing song. You can stay right where you are and be held in the love of our congregation, or you are welcome to form a circle around the outer, sil outer aisles, maybe even hold hands as we sing. From our service today, let it be this. You are loved. Go in peace. Mm -hmm.